Hi everyone and welcome back for Aero Update 3. In Aero Update 2 we saw that after running the simulations we were still left with quite a lot of flow separation at the intake of the side air intakes. Um, mainly because the flow coming off the underfloor here and uh, coming via the suspension and so on hitting the side pots was trying to jump up and this upward motion was causing flow separation before it would land again on the side pots and reattach to the geometry. So the assignment for Aero Update 3 was to solve this problem as good as possible to reduce the drag. Um, again, we got quite a lot of input from the community, so thanks a lot for that. Um, the first option was to move towards more or less a Ferrari design, where in top view, um, we want a more backswept geometry um, for the air intake contour. Um, the reason for this being that um, instead of pushing the air across the side pots, this would motivate the air to, to gently uh, reduce the pressure by going via the sides and so on, instead of pushing everything over the top. Um, visually, this would look like this in our solution. So you can see that here, um, this top edge, which was perpendicular to the car before, is now actually uh, inclined in a forward direction. The second way of reducing the flow separation was actually um, to make the flow align more, or make the side pod geometry be more aligned with the actual geometry of the flow separation bubble that we see. So to, to give it more surface to stick to instead of this flat horizontal curve. Um, and this would look like this um, in a close-up. So this is a section of the Era Update 2 design. We would actually uh, provide some more upward geometry and then dive downwards uh, to actually provide the flow with a nicely curved surface to stick to instead of just hitting this front edge and then jumping across and creating separation. Um, and this, if you look at the 3D model, um, would look like this. You don't see it too much, but on the side view, you can see that we have now a downward curve here on the side pot, um, trying to help the airflow to stay attached. And the third geometry, um, which was input uh, by Luca, is to provide a small wing, actually, at the top of the side air intake um, to kind of guide the air and semi-force it to stick attached uh, to stay attached to, um, uh, to the top of the side pots instead of splashing all over the place. Um, in terms of 3D representation, that would look like this. So we have this small wing here sitting just above the inlet of the side uh, air intake. So this would help to kind of force the air to stay attached around this uh, short bend or the sharp curvature of the top edge of the side air intake. Um, we ran the simulations um, and actually we have a few things to note before we dive into the details. If you look at the results, um, we have the reference. Uh, we have Aero Update 2 where we saw a big increase in downforce. Aero Update, uh, sorry, Aero Update 1. Aero Update 2 where we saw again uh, a nice increase of 11% uh, if I remember correctly in terms of downforce um, and we saw that drag decreased for air update one mind these scales by uh, this is this is very zoomed in so it's actually very small differences um, we saw a very small decrease in drag and then a small increase in drag for air update two what we saw now if we compare to air update two which is this one which is our reference now we see that we lose a small bit of downforce for each of these concepts uh, that we just ran and we also see a slight increase and i say slight because if you zoom in this is going from 0.91 to 0.92 so in terms of relative differences uh, we see that uh, we lose drag in the order of magnitude of 1.7, 1 1.4, uh, 5.3%. And we lose drag, uh, we increase drag by 1.5, 1.1, and 0.8%. Now, what's the reason for this? So, so there's a very pragmatic and realistic case of CFD uh, challenges. Um, so if you look at the flow results um, for Aero Update 2, this is the convergence graph. So we saw that it took quite a lot of iterations to detect convergence. Um, our algorithm waited until iteration 3078 to detect convergence. As you can see, the curve is quite flat by then. Um, and then we have an automatic algorithm that will stretch the length of the averaging window until it's long enough to get a reliable averaged value for a normal case. Now, in this case, um, this is quite atypical because we're looking for drag deltas of maybe 1% or even smaller or lift deltas, which means that 
the default settings of a normal CFD simulation um, are not sufficient anymore. We're actually operating within the margin, not just of computational error, but also in the, within the margin of how reliable your averaging uh, results are. Um, so this goes to show that for normal uh, CFD simulations, um, this is more than enough, what you see here in terms of averaging length. Um, but if you're really looking at the last bits of performance, which is very often the case, um, there's actually an exponential increase in terms of effort and time required uh, to improve performance. And the reason for that is that um, you need more and more iterations to get more and more um, averaging to get the very, very precise averaged value because you're looking at very small improvements in performance. So in Formula 1, the first 10% of performance improvement is fairly easy, but the last 1% is actually a lot, a lot more difficult. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. So we're operating within the margin of error, within the margin of averaging error, numerical error, and so on. So actually, that's the problem. Um, the solution, well, in reality, one option is that you start to increase the length of your averaging window by a lot. But in reality, especially Formula 1, where your um, amount of computational power and resources is limited, this would mean running it for two, three, four times as long to get that reliable average value, which is actually prohibitive in some cases. So that's one challenge. Another option is to actually cut out a part of the car if it's permitted, uh, because you need to have the upstream and downstream geometry if it influences uh, the local area you're looking at, that could also be an option um, to make a cutout of, for example, let's see, of this geometry of the car, um, take some upstream, because the upstream is really influencing the way it's provided here, um, and then maybe cut some back part of the car if it's not that relevant. The downside is that you're not really working with overall drag and lift coefficients anymore, but like an artificial coefficient for just this part, which is not that easy. Another part of the solution could be that you cut your car model in half and apply a symmetry plane and have double the resolution on just one half of the car, more accuracy, less iterations, um, or keep the same resolution, but you need just uh, fewer iterations, hopefully, uh, to make it converge. Or if you cut the number of cells in half, um, you can go faster uh, for each iteration. That's also an option, but keep in mind that cutting a car actually slightly can influence the uh, performance values because um, lateral oscillations of the flow, which are there in reality, crossing uh, the midpoint or a midplane or the symmetry plane of this car, they actually do have an influence on the drag. So if you are to add symmetry, keep in mind that you are, are you're adding a slight bias to the results. So today, what are we going to do? Are the results completely useless? No, that's not the case. We can still look at qualitative flow results to see what's actually happening um, and then make a sound decision on how to continue. So today, a very pragmatic exercise on how to deal with the challenges of CFD simulations um, and to still make use of the results that we have so far without going to uh, 10,000 iterations at this point or without remodeling, recutting the model. Um, so this is our reference. This is the flow stimulation uh, and separation that we have on Aero Update 2, and this is what we want to mitigate. So the first alternative is actually, let's call it the Ferrari design or the backswept geometry. Um, you can see that we have a lot less flow separation here at the top of the side uh, air intake, which is very good, which is exactly what we wanted. Only we have added a new area here. So as mentioned in the introduction, the goal was to provide some pressure relief in a horizontal plane instead of a vertical plane. Well, that's exactly what we did. But now we created a new problem, which is flow separation around this edge of the side air intake. So um, we see that this was not the case on the original one, and it is the case on the new one. Is that bad or good news? I think it's still good news, but it, because it means that if we find some solution which is in between, or if we can just slightly change this angle of attack here uh, for the side um, of the side pot here, so we can mitigate this one, this is actually a smaller problem than the original one that we had. So I do think this solution has a lot of potential. Um, the next one is the one where we have this curved surface here of the side air pot uh, to provide more natural, more uh, normal curvature for the airflow uh, to stay attached to. So let's look at the results here. We can see that we still have flow separation. If you compare it to the original one, 
though it's actually much less. So we have much less flow separation here um, for this curvature. Now keep in mind that um, if you add curvature um, to a geometry, um, you also add speed up of the airflow. Um, so this means that this pressure area, this low pressure area, now probably has been extended, which could be one of the causes for the reduction in downforce on the car. Um, so if you have a nicely curved surface at the top of the car, the air will speed up, and because of the Bernoulli effect, it will lower the pressure and actually starts to pull up your car. So be careful if this is the solution that you want to pursue to actually reduce um, the drag on the car. So the solution still has potential. It makes sense from a physical point of view that if you add more curvature, the flow stays attached uh, in a better way. But we still have flow separation despite the curvature that we added and despite the fact that we actually, if you look at this section, despite that we, the fact that we actually reduced the cross-sectional area of the air intake. So this would also compromise your cooling performance of the car or the engine performance, depending on what you're using that air for. Um, so interesting solution, but perhaps not the best solution. Um, then we have the thir third solution, which is to add this wing um, around that area of flow separation. Um, if we compare the results um, to era update two, um, we can see that this bubble here and the absence of flow separation here um, has now translated into a little larger area without flow separation here. But this wing is now also taking part in actually blocking the flow. And together with the side air intake, it's, it's forming one geometry um, which is blocking the flow. Um, does that mean the, the solution is not good? Not necessarily. It could be that this solution requires quite a lot of tweaking in terms of where to position this wing, the size of this wing, the angle of this wing, and so on. I do think it has potential, looking at the fact that we actually reduce flow separation in this area. But here, probably the, the angle of attack of the flow is different or more aggressive or there's a higher flow rate. It needs to be tweaked. So it could be that you need like um, uh, a dynamically changing angle of attack of this wing to keep the flow attached and so on. So three very interesting solutions and uh, theoretically uh, they're all worse than error update 2. In reality I think um, they're all within the margin of error and it's mainly error update 2 uh, which had the highest amounts of flow separation which has the most nervous curve which could be off by just a little in terms of averaged value. So if we ignore that for just a second and we look at the relative performance between um, uh, error update 3a, 3b, and 3c, we can see that they have a more stable graph. So they all have around 800 um, iterations in total, uh, this one 600. So um, we see that they're more stable, the graphs. They could also benefit from a bit more averaging if you really want to look at these details. But amongst each other, um, we can see that um, error update 3a has a loss of downforce 1.7 percent and um, extra drag of 1.7 percent as well. Um, error update 3b is actually a bit more interesting. It has um, 1.4 and 1.1 and this one has minus 5 and 0.8 but I think we should not look, look at these numbers too much. From a qualitative analysis I would say actually this uh, Ferrari-like design has the most potential. It's the most simple solution. We're not adding geometry, which is always tricky in terms of adding drag, and we're not reducing the cross-sectional area of the side air intake. So my subjective conclusion for now, and a very pragmatic one, um, dealing with the errors that we have, um, is to go for this solution, uh, which is the more backswept design, and take it from there for the rest of the car. Um, next up, we will be looking at redesigning the rear wing, um, because this one is still just a styling element, even though um, it's generating downforce, it could be made much more efficient. So next up is the rear wing. Um, so if you have any input, drop it below in the comments. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.